But you know what? Man's way of fixing things is not the way of peace. No. Mm -hmm. I tell them, I tell the president, if I could talk to the president today, I'd tell him, Mr. President, going your way and what you're thinking about it all is not the way of peace. No. Right. It's not the way of peace. Yeah, the way of peace is to get God back into schools. Amen. 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 Yes, right. Yes. Right. Amen. 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 Yeah. Get Jesus Christ back into the minds of the young people today. Absolutely. Begin to teach people the right morals of yes. life. Amen. Yes. How to respect one another and love and love people, you know, and love their neighbor mm -hmm. and do good and do right by others. Instill these God God principles in their heart and mind, even if they're not Christians. Install and steal the moral principles of God mm -hmm. in this nation. Yes. And where you can do that is at the schools. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I say to you, if the federal government don't do it, we need to get out of the federal government and get it back to the states. Yes. yes. And let each state instill their own school, yes. their own yes. doctrine in the schools. Yes. Amen. So that right. children can be raised knowing the difference between right and wrong, good Amen. people. Amen. And they won't be encouraged to, to go out here and do these things that they're doing That's right. today. Right. Right. Amen. There won't be no hate for Christians and hate for That's anybody right. else. Uh -uh. They'll learn how to love each other, respect one another, mm -hmm. respect right. God's law, respect God, Amen. and do what's right. Amen. Amen. We need to instill, instill that in our country today. Yeah. That's the way of peace. Amen. Amen. It's not forcing some other way. That's right. It's doing it God's way. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. See, every time the federal government tries to force its, its, its uh, will upon the nation, what happens? Every bad right. thing, it just goes haywire. Yes. It just goes haywire. Why can't them people understand that we, that, we, that we can't take God and prayer and Bible out of the lives of our children no. and out of the students and college and universities? Mm -hmm. Get those liberal, socialist, atheistic, mm -hmm. agnostics out of there. Oh. Put somebody in there to teach those kids that respect and love God. Mm -hmm. And instill the, the principles of God in the lives of these children. Yes. Amen. That are going into the world, into the workplace of the world. Amen. So that so that uh, that, that this country is is going in the right direction. I know. Going the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Going the wrong direction, and that's why everything's happening like it is. Mm -hmm. You know, they're using that as a catalyst. They're using that as leverage Amen. to enforce the will of a tyrannic government upon, yes. the, upon the nation. Yes, and what they're really doing is causing, a, they're, I'm afraid what they're going to do is cause a war. Yes. And I don't want to see that. No. I don't want to see my neighbor's son get killed and, and, no. and my son or anybody else's son. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Right. But that's what they're driving to. Yeah. So God help us. Let's, when you pray, let's pray for our country. Yes. yes. The Bible says, the way of peace they have not known. And another scripture says, There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. That's true. Mm -hmm. What is the wicked? The wicked are those who turn away from God's yes. way yes. to their own way. Yes. Well, I believe in God. I'm not a wicked person. Yes, you are. If you're turning away from what yes. God said to do and you're doing it your way, you're yes. a wicked man. Amen. Right. 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 Amen. You can holler all you want to that you believe in God and believe in Jesus and you're yes. a Christian and all that. If you're not doing what God said to do, you are wicked. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I am, brother. Yes, I know. You're wicked. Amen. There is no peace. To the wicked, saith God. Amen. You're not going to find peace going your own way. Nope. Amen. 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 That deserves a big amen. 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 Hallelujah. Turn with me to Ephesians. Now, God, let me tell you this first. God would have all men to live in peace. But when the leadership of this country is going away from God, it brings nothing but strife, division, mm -hmm. racism, right. hate. Yes. And every other ungodly thing that you can possibly think of 
begins to take place and happen all across the land. Yes. We need, we need to listen to what <coughs> God says in order to have peace. That's right. See? It's strange to me how that some people can believe. For instance, according to our own laws, <coughs> our law says we have a right to bear arms. There are those who want to take that right away mm -hmm. to bring peace to the land. To say to you, you have no right to do that. But you have a right to do anything you want to do that's evil. Mm -hmm. yes. You have a right to live any immoral way you want to live. You have a right. But you don't have a right to bear arms. Yes, I don't do. want to get over into politics or all that stuff. But God has ordained the sword, first of all. That's right. In the civil government, the scripture says, Paul says, God has ordained the sword to execute vengeance or judgment upon the evildoer. <laughs> That's what scripture says. Right. That's ordained of God. You take that away. <coughs> See, our constitution says that the that the right of all that is in the hands of the people, not a not a tyrant. That's but right. The people themselves. Okay. God says if you do things the way I said it, you'll have peace. Mm -hmm. If we don't do things God's way, there's not going to be any peace. Nope. That's right. Amen? That's yeah. right. If we, if we get the hearts of the people right with God, <coughs> there will be peace yes. in the land. Yeah. You don't, in other words, you cannot find me any scripture in the Bible. Now, I don't believe you can. Maybe you can. But if you do, you come show it to me. And I'm not being arrogant. I'm just being honest with you and maybe I've overlooked it. But there's not any scripture that I know of in the Bible that says that anybody from the very beginning of time since Adam has ever had a right to do what they wanted to do. Sin told man they could do that. That's it. Amen. Not God. Amen. Yes, yes. God didn't tell man it's okay for you to do anything you want to do. Mm -mm. Sin told them they could do that. Amen. Not God. Amen. Amen. Your own evil nature told you you had a right to defy God. Yes. God didn't tell you you had the right. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. God did not say you had a right to defy Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, it's my choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's not your, choice. No. your evil nature told you you had a choice. That's right. Yeah. Jesus chose the good over the evil. Yes. Why? Because His nature was perfect. Amen. Yes. His nature was God's nature. Yes. And when we have God's nature, God's nature always chooses the good over the evil. Yes, amen. Yes. If we follow Christ, then we follow what is good. If we follow ourselves, we do. We think, well, I have a choice. Your evil, carnal, natural self thinks that way. That's right. But when you're in Christ Jesus, behold, all the <coughs> things become new. Yes. You think different. You begin to behave different. Your desire is different. Mm -hmm. It chooses God, not self. It chooses good, not evil. It chooses the right way, not the wrong way. Yes, amen. amen. Come on, brother. Amen. That's the nature of God. The nature of God is not a decision. God didn't decide to get up this morning and say, I think I'll decide to be good today. <laughs> it's my choice. Uh -uh. That's, not even, that's not even on the agenda with God. It's impossible for God to think that way. Mm -hmm. God yeah. thinks totally perfect and good and yeah. always is, always has, always will be. And there's no, there's no shadow of turning. I was talking yeah, to right. you earlier. No shadow of turning yes. in Him. He is always what He is. Yeah. <laughs> so when we get in Him, when we get over into Him, when we get with Him, mm -hmm. yes. He begins to make us like Himself. 
He begins to form and shape our minds and our hearts to be like Him. The Bible says that we are to be followers of God as dear children. Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. We have the mind of Christ. We're not God, but we have the mind of Christ which teaches us and shows us the right way to go, the right way to live, the right way to think, the right way to behave, Amen. and the right things to desire. Yes, sir. And those things are always good. They are. Christ never desired anything but that which is good, isn't it? Amen. Is that right? That's right. How dare anybody ever say that Jesus ever desired anything else but that which was perfect? That's right. Well, I'm not Jesus. Nobody <laughs> said you was. Uh -uh. You're getting off the point here. You're getting off the issue. Nobody said you were Jesus. Mm -mm. But what we did say is Jesus is in you. Yes, he is. Yes. If He is in you, yes. mm -hmm. and He begins to transform our thoughts, mm -hmm. our minds, our lives, our heart's desire. Why? Because now we have His heart. <coughs> we have His heart. Yes, yes. Right, well, the Lord wants my heart. Yeah, He wants to get rid of that stinking rotten <laughs> thing. Give me a new one. That's right. Amen. 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 Yes. Your heart, my heart is wicked, evil yes. in itself, by yes. itself. It's no good. Amen. Right. I'm like the pig. Somebody tried to clean up and put, took him out of the hall pen and cleaned him up and put a, you know, put a blue ribbon around him. Yes. <laughs> Turn him loose. Where does he go? Right back to the hall pen. That's right. What you got to do with the pig? You got to change his nature. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got you got to make him something other than a pig if you're going to stay, stay out of the pig. Amen. So when God saved us, this is what Scripture says: Unto us a child is born; unto us a son is given. You ever read that in Isaiah? Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Yes. His name, one place his name should be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Unto us a son is given. <coughs> now, as I was thinking about that, I said, Lord, all things are made new in Christ. So what did God give to us? He gave to us the Son, Jesus. He gave to us His Son. And what does that mean? He gave to us His Son. The Bible calls it also the Spirit of His Son. The Spirit of His Son is in our hearts crying out, Abba, Father. The Spirit of His Son, the Spirit of Jesus is in us. What is the Spirit of Jesus? It is the very heart of God. Yes. Your spirit is your heart. Did you hear me? Your heart is your spirit. And when God saved you, He made you a complete new creature in Christ. Yes, He did. That old person you once was is dead and gone, and now Christ lives in you. What does that mean? Now I'm no longer living by the old heart, the old spirit that I was. Now I'm living in the new spirit that I am in Christ Jesus. That's what I am unto me. A son is given. God says, I will take out of you that old heart, that fleshly heart, he told me, he said to one prophet, uh, I believe it was in Isaiah, I will take out of you the old heart, the, flesh, the old heart of flesh. I will take that away out of you, and I will give you a new heart, the old heart, right? I'll give you a heart of flesh. Talking about, they said, take away from you the old heart and give you a heart of flesh. I've got to wonder, what does he mean, heart of flesh? He's certainly not talking about a heart of sin. He's not going to give us a heart of sin. I'm going to give him a heart of flesh. I'll take away from this, I'm going to quote it right. Take away from you the heart of stone. Yes. The stony heart, the hard heart, the evil heart, mm -hmm. and I will give you a heart of flesh. That's what he said in the prophet. I'll give you a heart of flesh. And he said, I'll write my laws in your heart and in your mind. I will write my laws in, in you. And your sins and transgressions I'll remember no more. Now, what is he? I said, Lord, what are you speaking about here? You're going to give us a heart of flesh. And then it just came to me. One day as I was thinking about it, I meditate. You know, we need to meditate. Amen. Sometimes just read the Bible. Well, I don't understand that. Flip, close the book and go away. I don't understand that. Close the book, get up and go do something else. I don't understand that. You know why? You're not meditating. You're not thinking. Give God a little time in your life. Will you? Give the Spirit a little time to, to dwell in your heart and mind and get, and get your mind to turn it. 
Praise God, it's so full of dust and cobwebs. <laughs> you need God to clean your mind out. Amen? That's right. Let the Lord begin to crank up gear and get it going and clean out all the cobwebs and the dust and oil that in there and start let you think it. And let the Spirit of God just come into your spirit and into your mind and begin to think of what God is saying. And I guarantee you when He begins to speak to you, the Scriptures, the Word of God will start coming together in your heart and mind. It'll start coming together to you. You'll start if, you, if you've read the Bible and if you keep reading the Bible and know what it says, God will start putting all those puzzles together. He'll, he'll, be making a, he'll be making that picture clear in your mind. And I believe God will show me this. He said, Lord, you're going to give me a heart of flesh. He's going to give me a heart of flesh. And then it came to me. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Same as in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the Word was made flesh. 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 God says, I'm going to give you. Unto you is given. Unto you is born. Unto you Unto me, unto all of us, unto us is given a son. I will give you a heart of flesh. <coughs> and the word was made flesh. Flesh. And dwelt among us. So what God is telling us, I'm going to give you the heart of Christ. I'm going to give you the very spirit of my own son. Mm. Amen. The Word was made flesh. We are begotten of the Word of God. We are made of the Word of God. And the same, it's like, it's like a child is born in this world that comes from his father. The blood does not come from the mother. It comes from the father. Ask any physician, any medical uh, person will tell you that. Science will tell you that the blood of the human being doesn't come from the mother. It comes from the father. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So the child is of his father. He's begotten of his own father. Mm -hmm. Not of his mother, of his father. The mother is the caretaker. The mother is the place that he's kept safe and nourished until the time comes to be born into the world. Mm -hmm. But the blood comes from his own father. The same way with us, you and I are children of God because the blood comes not from this world but from him who made us in his likeness in Christ. So I give you a heart of flesh. I give you the Word. I give you my Son. My Son who is made flesh for you. Praise God. And He will come and dwell in you and I will make you new in Him. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are a new spirit, a new heart, a new person. You have new thoughts, a new mind. A new everything about you is going to be brand new. I'm going to write all that I want in your heart. In that heart, what heart? In Christ. Everything that God has for us is in Christ. Everything that God wills for us is in Christ Jesus. Yes. I'm going to write it in your heart. Who is whose heart? The heart of Christ. It's in me. Now, if I'm in Christ, the Bible says, if we're in Christ, if we're in Him, which is the Spirit of God, if we're in Him, then praise God, the law is fulfilled in us. In Christ. The, was not Jesus Christ a fulfillment of all things? He fulfilled Amen. the righteousness of the law? Did Jesus fulfill the righteousness of all the law? And the Bible says that He is our righteousness. Mm -hmm. He is our peace. He is our peace with God. So the righteousness of God in Christ is given to us. The very heart of the matter is Christ in us. We're made new in Him. Now, what does that all spell out? What is that all? That's the very, that, that what I just told you is the very core, the very heart of the Gospel. And Paul in his letters Every single letter, I looked it up, every single letter that Paul wrote to the churches, you can look it up for yourselves, beginning with the first chapter of every book he ever wrote. In every single one he says, 
grace and peace be unto you. Look it up for yourselves. Mm -hmm. He starts off his letter the same in every instance. Praise God. He, some of them, he may say some things, two or three or four verses, and he gets down. You'll get on down there about fifth, fifth verse of some, of some of the books, and you'll find it. Grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be unto you. Now I was wondering, oh Lord, Paul. Paul is addressing the whole world. He's addressing the Gentile world, which includes every one of us. It includes all the world and all the people in the world of all ages. And he's saying the, the most important thing that he wants us to understand, first of all, is that God gives us grace and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Now I got to thinking about that. Even Peter himself, Peter and his books do the same thing. If you read the book of Peter, first and second Peter, he says the very same thing. He gives him the same, uh, how do you say it, eulogy or not eulogy? Salutation. Salutation, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Say he gives him the same words and he says the same thing as Paul. Grace and peace be unto you. My God, that must have filled their heart and their mind. That must have been the first thing on their mind, on their agenda. The first thing the Holy Ghost put into their mind to write down on the paper. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Boy, I said that, to them that was the strongest message they had in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Grace and peace be unto you. He's letting them know right off the bat there's nothing for you to be concerned about, to be uh, afraid of, to be startled of, to be uh, con concerned yourself about whether or not you are included. I want you to know you are included in the very family of God. You are included in the household of God. Grace and peace be to you. This is what he said here. Ephesians. So what does that mean? Christ is the Prince of Peace. If you're in Christ, you have peace with God. And you have peace with the world. The world may not be at peace with you. <laughs> and it's not. It's not going to be at peace with you. But you can be at peace with the world. You can have peace when there's Everything's raging around you. When the whole world is, 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 is filled with division and turmoil and trouble and on every hand, those who are in Christ have peace. Jesus Himself is the Prince of Peace. So what God gave to us when He gave us the heart of Christ, when He gave us Christ, first and foremost, He wants us to know, first and foremost, it's by His grace. We have His grace, we have His favor, and we have peace with Him. <coughs> with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We have peace. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing that happened. When we came to know God, whenever that was in our lifetime, the first thing that happened, we came to know the grace of God towards us and peace with God. It doesn't matter. All the other things that troubled us and all the things we may not understand and the things that we learn and grow in, all that comes, all that comes through life. But the first and first things that happens is God lets us know that we have His grace, His favor towards us. And we have His peace. Yes, we do. Boy, that's, that, that, oh man, that, that, <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Yes. But boy, that gives me great consolation. Thank you. That gives me great assurance. Thanks, that gives me great comfort. That, that, that settles my heart and my mind yes. with God. That I have peace with Him. Yes. Sweet peace. To know Jesus is to know sweet peace. To have Jesus is to have peace with God. Let me read the scripture. Fifth 
Ephesians 2, 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometime were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For He is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. What's He talking about there? Understand, in the Jewish temple, in the mighty Jewish temple at Jerusalem, there was a place made for both Jew and Gentile to come in and worship God. But the Gentiles were forbidden to cross over out of the court of the Gentiles. The court of the Jews was further up, closer to the holy place, the, the holiest of holies. It was further into the temple. Whereas the Gentile court was on the outside, further out in the temple. And there was a wall between the two. The court of the Gentiles and the court of the Jews. But now he says, Christ has come and abolished that wall that separated us. <coughs> There's no longer a division between the Jew and the Gentile. Christ has broken down that middle wall of partition. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. So that the Gentiles have a right. <laughs> they have a right to come on in with the rest of them. Get closer to God. Get in there with God. Hallelujah. Having abolished in His flesh the enmity. That means hostility. Adversity. Enmity is hostility. Adversity. It means that which is against. Fighting against. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain, of two, one new man, so making peace. Now, first of all, he tells us about the peace that God makes between men. What that means is God destroys and abolishes the differences. Man makes the difference between man. Man is the one who creates the difference between man. Men and men. God didn't make the difference. Man makes the difference. But when Jesus came, He abolished the difference. God sees no difference in any of us. He sees no color in Christ. As a matter of fact, the Bible says there's neither male nor female right. in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. Boy, He did a lot there, didn't He? Yeah. I mean, Jesus did a lot. He, he got rid of all the distinguishing marks of man and made us all one in Him. That's beautiful. Now, now the world without Christ thinks that they can create such a scenario. They can create such a world to live in. They can create an order of things. A utopian world in which everybody shares in the same things and everybody's equal and everybody has all that they need and everybody, you know, everybody's living on the same plane. We're all equal with one another. The only ones that's not is the ones that's ruling over us. They're way up here. Amen. <laughs> they live high up on the hill in the oh, mansion, yeah. you know, and they rule over the masses. And all the masses live in the same kind of house. They all wear the same kind of clothes. They all make the same money. They all eat the same kind of food. Yeah. Nobody has a better car than anybody else. Everybody lives in the same plot, like, kind of house like everybody else does. It's a beautiful, wonderful world that they're yeah. trying to create. Let me tell you something. That's nonsense. Man cannot create that. Only Jesus can create that. And He's the only one that can do that. And one day He will do that. Amen. Amen. But it will be done in the right way. Yes. Not man's way, yes. but God's way. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And everybody is equal. Now listen. Rewards are different. God's going God's to divvy out rewards for His people in the end of time. We all stand before Him to be judged according to our works. We will be judged according to our works. Not to see whether we're going to go to heaven, of whether we're saved or not. Amen. But we will be judged according to our works as to our reward. And there will be those who will be rewarded more than others. Mm -hmm. yes. And I don't know what that reward's going to be. You don't know what it's going to be. We think we know what it's going to be. This guy, Billy Graham, surely is going to live in a bigger mansion than I am. We think. 
Our sister so and so, surely she's going to have something better than anybody else because I know her. God's surely going to really give her something special in heaven. We, we you know, muse on those thoughts. But I'm so glad that God's the judge. Yes, Amen. Amen. I've told the Lord, I said, Lord, what am I going to, what do I need a mansion for? I've, I've sung that song. When I was a little kid, he used to sing in church, I'm satisfied with just the kind of day low. You know, a little silver, a little gold. You know, when I get to heaven, I want a mansion lined with silver and gold. Well, I, I, as I grew older and here in the last several years of my life, I said, God, what do I really need a mansion for in heaven? And I got to thinking about it. I said, Lord, if you're going to have homes in heaven, places for us to live in, I said, why? <laughs> What's the reason? I mean, if there's doors, what's the door, door for? Doors to keep things out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to keep nobody out, man. I don't want to keep anything out that's in heaven. <laughs> and certainly if there's doors, there ain't going to be no locks on the door. <laughs> and I don't understand it, Lord. I don't understand what, what's the purpose of all that. I said, Lord, if I've got a new body like yours and I stand before the God of all eternity, that's enough for me. <laughs> if I'm with Jesus and I'm with everybody else, Lord, that's beautiful. I, I mean, that's, I, could, I, believe I, could, I believe I could live eternally that way. I don't understand rewards. I don't understand what that means. But the Bible teaches us that God does reward according to what we do. Whatever that means, whatever that has, God has in mind, it's beautiful. So God doesn't make everything equal in that sense. We're equal as far as children of God, we're all equal in His eyes. He loves us all the same. But what we do here in this life, and how we serve Him, what we do, He will reward us. Others will be rewarded more than others. Some, some you know, even, even here on earth, He gives some people uh, a little bit, and some He gives more. And some just kind of mediocre, <laughs> somewhere in between. Some gets one gift, talent, and one gets five talents, you know. And the guy with five, you know, he, he works and works and turns it into ten talents. And the guy with one, he goes and hides his any music. And the other guy with two, he makes two more, and I make four. So there's somebody always at the beginning, you know, somewhere at the start, and at the end there's someone in between. We all have our gifts of God. And God is expecting us to use what He gives us in this life so that we may, uh, you know, uh, multiply it for His glory. Do it for His glory. We're not doing this for ourselves, but for Him. Whatever it is we do, whatever we achieve in this life, we're doing it for Him. And the fact of the matter is, He's the one helping us doing it. It's Christ that's working in us. So, Lord, you know, I don't understand all this, but I'm with you. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. So, our hearts and our minds actually, in that sense, become one with Christ. We become one with Him. So, so as Paul said, it's not really me anymore, it's Christ. <laughs> you know, it's not me, it's Him in me. So, in other words, Christ becomes so overwhelming, so predominant, so authoritative in Paul's life, he, is, he, he, becomes, the, he becomes the Lord of his life. So that he realizes, I'm not living anything in this world unto myself for what I want to do. I'm living totally... 100% totally for Him. Whatever Christ wants in my life, that's what I'm living for. Can you imagine living that way? I'm living totally for Him. The, the breath that I breathe is for Him. The life that I live is for Him. The things I do, what I say, everywhere I go, people I meet, Anything that I do with my hands, anything at all, is for Him. God, what a life. <laughs> what, what, a, what a dedication. What a, what a life. Paul is a great example for us. Amen. To follow. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. We should all be examples that way to one another. I mean, we all need, we all need examples. Amen. We all need somebody to look to. We really do. You know, I, I need somebody to look to. You need somebody to look to. Look to somebody else. If you need help, you always need help. You always need somebody to pray for you, to look to, or ask a question, or, or to find some, you know, some help somewhere, some encouragement for somebody. You're always looking around for something from somebody. Isn't that right? That's right. So let's be that example that Paul was. It's not me, but Christ. Amen?
So, so, so there, God makes no difference in that. We're all one in Christ. But as far as what we have, what we do in heaven, the rewards that will be there, I don't understand that. I don't know about that. I know that will be there. So therefore, we're not all going to be living in the same kind of house, you know, and, and wearing the same kind of this or doing the same kind. And there's going to be there's going to be variances of things in heaven. But it's all going to be beautiful. It's all going to be perfect. It's all going to be justly right. For God is just in all that He does. Yes. And, and in every heart, we should never... There will be no envy. There will be no jealousy. Right. There will be no, I'm better than you. I'm bigger than you. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm more important than you. No one will feel that way mm -hmm. in heaven. There will not be any of that in heaven. We have that here on earth. And it's a shame that it should be in the church that anybody should ever envy or be jealous of one another and say, I deserve more than you do. You're not worthy of it. I am. That kind of a thought. All is of the world. It's a carnal mind. It's carnal thinking. Huh? I said, no more pain, no more sorrow. Yeah, no more pain, no more sorrow. But then there'll be none of this stuff, you know, where, well, uh, he deserves it and I don't, or I deserve it and he don't. Right. Whatever, it is that God, whatever it is that we have in heaven, it'll be perfect and everybody be happy with it. Amen? And that's the way it is in Christ and here on earth, if we'll just think about it. That's the way it really is here in the church, is the way it should be. Is that whatever God gives you, I'm happy for you. Whatever God does with you, I'm happy for you. Whatever God wants to do with your life, glory to God. Get in there and do it with all of your heart, and the Lord will bless you and increase you and prosper you in everything you do. Praise God. And I'll be with you and I'll pray for you and back you up 100%. Amen. 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 That's the way it all be. No jealousy, no envy, no all this, this, you know, just praise God. God does what He wants and we're all part of it. It doesn't matter who we are, what you are, what you do. Just be grateful that God's given you something to do mm -hmm. right. in the church, in the body of Christ. doesn't matter what we are. If we're just a little bitty finger or just a little bitty toe, mm -hmm. amen? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right. Hallelujah. God adds. The devil takes away. God adds. Yes. <laughs> and you know that for sure. Don't you? Amen. <laughs> the Lord adds. And the Lord uses. And Paul said, those members of our body which we bestow less honor, God has bestowed more honor. What does that mean? Well, uh, when, when, if you ask John, how hard is it for him now to walk? <laughs> He's got to get used to walking a certain way because the toes make a lot of difference in the balance of your walk. Those toes are there to help you balance. When you walk to keep you straight, when you're there, right? That's right. And when those toes are missing, you're kind of a little off balance. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to walk again in a different way. You kind of get used to it, until, you know. But if, just like if you didn't have any toes at all, how would you walk? You're so used to using your toes to help you walk and balance your body, the rest of your body. But we never think about our toes, do we? We're always looking at our face. We're always, we're always looking at our, how pretty our face is. Amen. We, we put more honor on our face than how we look outwardly. I mean, well, look at me. I'm beautiful. Right? You know, look at my hair. You know, we're always giving more honor to those things. God gives more honor to that little old toe than everything about it. Because why? If it wasn't for your toes, man, you wouldn't be able walking around, would you? Amen. So God gives honor to the toes. He gives honor to those things that we don't think much about. So that's the way it is in the church. No matter what our part is in the body of Christ, be grateful because we all are playing a part and it's all God's plan. Amen. It's all in God's doing. It's all, it's all God's, it's what God's doing. Amen. Amen. Don't have big dreams of being anything but just what God wants you to be. Amen. That's enough. That's enough. Praise God, you don't have to be famous and, 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 and rich and everything else. Just be who you are. Let God use you the way He wants to and be satisfied and be happy and rejoice in the Lord. And if God wills, He'll use you even more. Amen. Because He sees our heart. He knows what's in there. He knows what we can handle. He knows what, 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 how far we've grown in Him. He knows what it is that we can take and what we can't take. So praise God. Be happy in the Lord. Be at peace with God. And praise God. Just seek Him and He'll do with you what He wants to do. Amen. 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 And we say, well, I'm not a grand preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not that. It doesn't matter what you are. <laughs> praise God. Do you love God? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Do you love your neighbor? Amen. You know, a lot of times we might be a preacher, we not be a teacher, we not be a singer, we not be a musician. We may not be any of those things that we think is the grand greatest thing to be. I think the greatest thing to be is somebody like Mother Teresa was. Live among the lepers and help them out every day. She didn't get no glory from anybody. One day she'll get her rewards great in heaven. Now I'm just calling Mother Teresa. You know, I believe she I believe she went to heaven. But you know what? 
God's not looking at the great things we do. I read, a, I read somebody put a comment on Facebook. It said, it's not the greatest people that you stand with that matters, but those who are down and out that you sit down with and take time with. Amen. Something like this to, the, to, those, to, the, to that effect. It's what it means. We think that because we know so-and-so and we've been with so-and-so or we know the president or we know this one or we know that one and oh, I, you know, I rub elbows with the finest and, and, uh, and the elite and this. God's not interested in that. He's no. looking to say, do you, do you take time to sit down with the poor and the downtrodden yes. and help them? Yes. Amen? Amen. That's what's important to God. It's not the high and the mighty. God resists the proud. Yes. And gives grace to the humble. Yes. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Mm. Jesus Himself was humble. Jesus Himself didn't go to the, to the elite and the proud and the religious and try to make of Himself anything, mm -hmm. but He walked among the poor and the lowly. He walked among the outcasts. He walked among the sick. He walked among the crippled and the lepers. He walked among people that nobody wanted to have any, nothing to do with. Jesus went and ministered to the world that no one thought was worth taking time with. But God thought it was worth taking time with. And He saved thousands of them. And He healed thousands of them. And it's not, the Bible says it's not even recorded all the things that Jesus said and did. But if God cares about things that you and I don't seem, sometimes seem to care about. But in Christ Jesus, as we... As we Focus on Him as we see Him in us. As we draw near with Him. We begin to understand His Spirit. We begin to understand His heart. We begin to understand His love. And how it is that God loves people. And how it is that God's concerned about other people. And then you begin to understand what it is that God wants you to do. Hello. What does God want me to do? Get in there with Jesus and love Him and serve Him and seek Him. And you'll find out what He wants you to do. It may be just a little bitty thing. It may be the small thing. Jesus came as a servant. Mm -hmm. What are we this morning? I want to be a big preacher. That's what I used to think when I was a kid. I want to be A.A. Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Billy Graham. I want to be something. No, I just want to be what God made me to be. Amen. That's all I am. We are what we are by the grace of God. Amen. And what little you do, be faithful to do what God has given you to do. Yes. And if God wants, He'll give you more. Yes. And if you really want it, you know, sometimes we think, well, I wish I could do this. The fact of the matter is, you don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'd sure like to be famous. If you got out there in that kind in that world, no. you'd find out maybe real quick you don't want to be there. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be in that I don't want to be in that world. <laughs> I don't care about that. There's too many problems out there, man. There's too many heartache and headaches. and There's too much pressure in this world. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm kind of getting away from everything I want to bring to you, but what, I'm getting, what I want to say to you this morning, I'll stop right there. I'll bring it this far. I'll come this far with the sermon. Christ is our peace. He gives us peace where we are. Wherever you are. Well, if I could just if I could just have this, or if I could just do that, or if this would just happen, I could just be so happy. But God is telling us this morning, right where you are, <coughs> He gives you peace. Amen. You don't need anything else to happen. You don't need any other thing to any other benefit of life. You don't need any uh, the, the circumstances to improve around you. God improves in you and gives you peace. Man, that's worth that's worth more than all the gold and silver and anything in the world. Hallelujah. Jesus is the great equalizer. Jesus is the great emancipator. Jesus is the great Savior, the great Redeemer, the great Lord of all. He is Lord of all. And He is peaceful. Why? Because in God,
comes an end to all adversity. In God is the end of all frustration, of all fear, of all doubt, of all, what can I say? Disharmony, disunity, dissatisfaction, evil, sin, anything that is of this world comes to an end with God. So peace settles. Peace is the settle. Peace is the uh, is the continuity. It is the everlasting, enduring nature of God. It permeates heaven. It permeates the universe in Him. Now I realize that right now everything's upside down. But in God, everything is at peace. Wherever God is, is peace. <laughs> Wherever God is, <coughs> all is well. All is well. It's settled. I have no more questions. I have no more doubts, no more fears. I have no more anything. <coughs> I'm absolutely at peace. My mind's at peace. Isn't it wonderful to let your mind... You ever had days when, when your mind was so troubled and you had so much on your mind you couldn't even sleep at night? Boy, I've done that so many times. Mm -hmm. Go to sleep at night, you can't sleep. You've got so much on your mind. You're mm -hmm. troubled by so many things. Just, just come at you. You can't get to sleep maybe 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. You finally goes off. And when you get up the next morning, you're so tired. You can't hardly get around the next day. But isn't it wonderful to have a day when your mind is at total rest and there's nothing, absolutely nothing coming in there bothering your mind, troubling your mind whatsoever, and you're at total peace and you're, you're just relaxed. And all is well. That's the way it is in God. Continually. Continually. That's what Jesus brought to the world. The Bible says that Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far off and near. That was His message. That was His, that was his, uh, his purpose for coming. That was, that was His work to do. That's what He came to do and what He came for and what He accomplished at the cross. That's what He accomplished throughout for His whole life. He brought peace to a troubled world. Peace with God and peace with each other. Peace. The peace of God. Let the peace of God rule your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. Hallelujah. The world doesn't have His peace. Jesus said, I give you peace, not as the world gives, but you do I give to you. You have true relation to the world, be of good cheer. I will overcome the world. I give you peace. Peace. We, tell, we sing the songs, I have peace like a river. Peace like a river. Peace like a river. And I get thinking, Lord, sometimes rivers are boisterous and, they're, and, they're, and they're, they don't seem to be at peace. They're running real swiftly and real hard, real fast. And they're rushing over the rocks and rushing down the side and they're rushing and going and moving. And, and you have to think, what does that mean? Sometimes you can go to a river, it's real peaceful, it's real quiet, it's moving real slow, you know. Just like the song says, peace like a river. Sometimes that river is running, running real fast. But it's still, peace like, what does that mean? God has set its course and nothing to stop it. God has set the course and no matter what it comes across, what the water runs over, it's going to keep going. And that's the way it is with God. He gives you peace and nothing's going to stop it. God's intended to give you His peace and the devil's not going to take it away. He's going to try. <laughs> but deep down in your heart where, where the, where the uh, source is, the source is in your spirit. It's in Christ. That's where the source is. The source of our peace doesn't come from the circumstances and how good things are going on the outside. The source comes from the inside. Amen. You can be as sick as a dog. You can be sick, dead, or dying and still have peace. Yes. You can be all crippled up and broken up and lose some of your toes. You can still have peace. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can go to the hospital and have operations, or a dozen operations, you still have peace in your soul because you have peace like the river. 
And God has commanded that river to flow and nothing's going to stop it. Amen. God has commanded peace in our life and nothing's going to stop that peace. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Stand with me, everybody. Amen. Somebody says, well, if I have peace, why am I so troubled? We're not believing what God said. We're not believing the Scripture. But to those who believe, their heart is settled. To those who follow Christ, they believe God just as He did. Just as He did. Just as He trusted in the Father. So do we learn to trust in the Father. And whatever God has so said to us, we can trust it. See, that's the whole stuff. It's real simple, ain't it? We, don't want, we want to complicate everything. We want to complicate our lives. We want to complicate the problem. We want to complicate the answer to our problem. We want to complicate how hard it is to get an answer to our question. It can't be that simple. There's got to be more to it. No. It's simply this. If God said it, it's so. If God said it, it's true. And He cannot lie. Do we believe Him? Do we trust Him? Do we know that? That's what happened to you when you were first saved. He came to you like a light. Mm -hmm. It came on. Mm -hmm. What did you do about that? Did you think about, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about this. Man, you just dove, you just dove in. Didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Like a kid down to down, you know down to the ocean, man. You go down there to the beach. You don't you don't hum haul around. You go jump in the ocean. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what God is. You come to God comes to us. We jump in. That's what happened. And what does that mean? That means you fully and wholly trusted Him with your heart, with your mind, with all that you are. You knew that God is real. Right. And that God is good and so good and loving yes. and all the things that He did for us. And praise God, we just give ourselves over to it just, just like that. He just does it. And it's just done. We believe Him and trust Him. Because look what He's done. Look what He's already done. If God can save a wretch like me, a wretch like you, He can save us. He can keep us. Hello. If He can deliver us, He can keep us. Yes. If he, what He promised us, He will do it. He told Israel, when you come out of Egypt, I'm going to bring you to the land of promise. And they said, oh, we're in crack that land. God did all that He did for me. Delivered them out of all the trouble. He sent all that down there on the Egyptians and all the plagues that came and didn't, didn't touch one of them. They were safe in the land of Goshen. Not one of those pestilences or one of those things came upon the children of Israel. God kept them safe in the land of Goshen. And he delivered them out of Egypt with a strong hand. He rolled back the Red Sea and a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. And he was with them and spoke to them and all these things. And when they got out there, he said, No, I don't think we can take that land. <laughs> <laughs> God can deliver us. He can surely take us on in. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I said, If God delivered us, he's surely going to bring us all Amen. the way. Amen. Amen. They had just said that. They went right on in. Praise God. They yes. just stepped right on and came his land. Amen. Amen. And took, partook of the land. Right then and there. But they didn't. Amen. Yes. Amen. So Christ had to come. Yes. The rock that followed them in the wilderness was Christ. Paul said it was Christ. Not that the rock itself is Christ, but it's a symbolic of Christ. The water in the wilderness. So when God knows our frame. He knows how we think. and knows what we are. We get stubborn. We get rebellious. We get... Unbelieving, we full of doubt. We get we reserve. You know, we have we have uh, you know we have reservations about things. God says, "Believe me and trust me. I brought you this far. I'm going to bring you all the way." Yes. When we do that, we have peace with God. We have peace. We have that peace with God. Amen. Yes. Let us not work against God, but work with Him. Yes. God's not working against us. He's working for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's working with us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. 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 That'll give you peace right there. Yeah. That'll settle the whole thing right there. Sure. Every one of you this morning got any problems at all. That, that right there will settle the whole thing. God is for you, not against you. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, this morning because you have given us such great and precious promises. Such peace. Well, that we can say to anybody who asks us, how are you doing? 
we can answer and say, I'm at peace. I'm at peace with God. I'm at peace. God has given me peace. All is well. All is well with my soul. All is well. I'm not looking at the circumstances. I'm not looking at the trouble I'm in. I'm not looking at things that's happening around me. I'm looking at what He's given to me. And because of that, I have peace with God. And He gives me victory to overcome this world. He gives me victory to overcome. And if you have any kind of a problem this morning you're going through, God wants you to let you know He will bring you out. He will bring you out of that. If you've got a question to God, He will give you an answer. If you've got something you don't understand, He'll give you an understanding. <coughs> don't doubt God. Believe God. Trust God. And seek God. And He will bring it to pass. <coughs> God gives us peace in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus was with His disciples, they had many questions to ask Him. They didn't know a lot of things. But He was still with them. He's still there. He's still around them. They're still with Him day and night. They're going wherever He goes. They're following Him. They're, they give up all that there was in their life to follow Jesus. And yet they still didn't understand. They still didn't have peace about some things. And yet here's the Prince of Peace walking right beside them. Yes. So don't be dismayed this morning. If you don't have a little bit of peace about something that you're going through, Jesus is still with you. <laughs> and He's the Prince of Peace. Just hold on to Him. Get next to Him. Lean on Him. Praise God. Forget about it. Just give, say, Lord, I can't handle this no more. I just can't put up with it no more. I just lay it all to You. It's just, you take care of it. <laughs> I'll guarantee you He will. <coughs> he will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other day I was doing a job. I'm going to let you know. I keep talking. But the Spirit just keeps moving. I can't help. I was doing a job the other day putting us in the wallboard and bathroom around a tub for a lady. And I had, I had to use glue. This old glue that you shoot with a, yeah. a caulking gun. And boy, uh, the board was flimsy. And I had to glue the wall with the board at the same time. Put it in a put it in a piece of trim. You know, it slides into the trim. And I had to do all that at one time. And that board flopped around, flopped in the tub, flopped on top of my head. I was trying to hold it and I had glue on there and, and I was getting glue all over my hands and all over the wall and I stuff was just falling and hauling everywhere and getting everywhere. I said, oh my God, I was about to fall apart. And I said, God, give me grace for this. Yeah, really? I hauled it out. Lord, please give me some grace to handle this. Will you? Yeah. And suddenly everything just slipped in place. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> But I had to go get some. I had to go get some paint thinner and clean up all that glue. Out of that I mean, I'm telling you, I had that stuff smeared everywhere. <laughs> you know, I had smeared all the wall, all my hand, and everywhere. And I didn't have that. I didn't have that paint thinner with me. I had to go all the way back to the house to get it and come all the way back to the dump to clean that mess up. But God gave me the grace. <laughs> I ask him because I was fighting, struggling. I couldn't make it work. The silly board wouldn't go in the trim. I couldn't get it back on the wall. It was flimsy, falling on my head, falling everywhere. I couldn't get it right. I couldn't get it straight. Finally, I said, Lord, give me the grace to do this. Will you give me the grace? <laughs> Somehow, I'm stuck up there and went in. That thing just went right on. Just fit right in perfect. If I'd done that in the first place, I wouldn't have had to mess with all that good. <laughs> But that's the way the Lord is. Regardless of our weakness and our failure, He's still with us. So I have peace with Him. I'm content. In all of my failures and weakness, I'm content with Him. Because when I'm weak, He is strong. Yes. When I come to the end of myself, I come to Him. And that's what He wants. That's really, that's really what He wants. He wants us to trust in Him fully and completely. Amen. You can't handle it by yourself, but He'll help you. He'll help you in every situation. It's just every little thing in life. He will help you because He's the Prince of Peace. And He wants you to have peace of mind about everything that concerns you. Everything in your life that concerns you concerns Him. He wants you to have peace. How many wants to have peace? Amen. Amen. Ain't one of us say no to that. We want peace, don't we? Yes. Uh, we, don't want, we don't want turmoil and, mm -hmm. and, and trouble and strife and things. Mm -hmm. See, why some people live for that. Mm -hmm. If they got a, something, something going on like that, they act like they're not happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, I met a lot of people that talks about troubles all the time. I, I don't say anything about myself, you know. 
and, and, and if I do, you know, I say, well, who, who, who are you? You know, well, I don't understand that. Uh, if I tell them all about me, I say, good well, grief, you know. <laughs> What's the what's the what's the what's the answer to that? What's the key to that? What's the trick? What, you got some kind of trick going here? What is it? Man, it's Jesus. Yes. I don't have any problems. Amen. I have peace with God. Oh, I got things coming to anybody. I have peace with God, and because of that, I can walk in that and trust Him and know that when if something does come slamming against me. And it does sometimes, believe me, it just slams hard. He gives me peace. Amen. Father, thank you this morning for giving us peace. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for giving us peace. In the midst of all of our troubles, we have peace. In the midst of all the things that slam up against us in life, you give us sweet peace that controls and rules our hearts and minds. We're not going to be ruled by our aggravation of what's happening. We're going to be ruled by the peace of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. God bless you. Say amen. Amen.